So we know that it's a tried stone. We know that Christ was tried, and we know that we as Christians, it's a crucified life, and we'll go through trials and tribulations. But we have a sure foundation. And sometimes when you hear the news, you don't, you feel shaky because things look bad. But I want to say to the church this morning that we do have a sure foundation, and it's in Christ. And not only do we have a sure foundation in Christ, an eternal foundation, we also have a sure foundation today in this earth because God has decreed it that this is his land. So he's used our forefathers <laughs> to lay a strong and powerful foundation in the United States, and it's lasted over 200 years. So we don't only have this spiritual sure foundation of eternal life, but we have this sure foundation today that while it looks like it's not sure, it is sure in Christ. It's interesting to note this passage of scripture in Isaiah 28. As I read this passage, it says, you know, the Lord's going to give us the tried stone, the precious cornerstone, the sure foundation. Then you look at this whole chapter, and I like to do that a lot. And it's interesting to see what Isaiah, why he's prophesying that there's going to be a sure foundation. And he's prophesying it because they're in warfare, and they're in judgment, and there's a lot of difficulty, difficulty going on. And judgment was coming to Judah. It's really interesting. And here's what the word of the Lord says in that chapter. It says, because of scornful men, that rule the people, this is the word of God, and made lies of their refuge and hid themselves in falsehood. Then Isaiah prophesied and said, that doesn't matter, there's going to be a sure foundation in Zion, sure foundation in God. And I thought, that's where we are today. We have scornful people, people, they didn't win, so they're mad, they're angry, there's hate, there's vengeance. They don't see that we have a sure foundation. In Jesus Christ. And they rule the people. There's lies. All those kinds of things going on in our earth. But we need to look at what God is doing. That God is bringing forth his people in righteousness. And what we need to remember is that God is the Lord. He is our cornerstone. He's our strength. He's our foundation. He's our hope and our consolation. I felt grieved for our nation for some time now. And perhaps there are some of you that feel grief over the lack of godly morals in our country. But <clears throat> consider this word from 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter and 16th and the 17th, 17th verse of the great view. Open your Bibles and turn to that 2nd Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. It says, Our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, we need to remember that God loves us. And if he loves us, nothing's going to happen to us without his concern over our life. It says, who loved us and has given us an everlasting consolation, a good hope through grace. Through grace. <clears throat> Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good work. That passage of scripture is very powerful. Because in a day when you feel that things are shaky, we need to realize that Christ and the Father, the strength of all humanity, loves us and has given us an everlasting consolation, good hope, and grace. So we need to preach the good hope and preach the grace and preach the good consolation as much as we remind us that we're living in a situation that God may judge for our country. What is consolation? I like to look up words, you know. Uh, I've talked to other Christians across the land and there is a great grief in their heart over the wickedness that's going on. But consolation means this. It has a greater meaning than just comfort. It means to alleviate grief. So when we feel burdened for the things that are going amiss in our country, we need to remember this passage of scripture that God says, I'm not only going to comfort you, but I'm going to alleviate your grief. I'm going to give you peace and hope because we have a sure foundation. Our hope is established on God's promise and it's grounded in the sure foundation. Today, from the beginning of time, the scripture talks about the foundation. I, I have 
haven't heard much about this lately in our ministries that we watch on television and things like that. But Psalm 102.5 says, Of old thou hast laid the foundation of the earth. And I think it's important today that the church feels the comfort of the Holy Spirit. That, that whatever transpires in the immorality and the wickedness of our country, we have a Christ, a sure foundation. And we have a comfort and a consolation. And we don't need to be grief-stricken, but we do need to be in prayer. We need to pray. We need to, to uh, be more mindful that God is on the move for our nation. God's word talks about foundations over and over and over. The prophets of God declared, you know, his word. Isaiah 48, verse 12 says, hearken unto me. We read this in, in the devotion this morning. He says, I called you. I'm he, I'm the first, I'm the last. My hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. Sometimes when we see the nakedness that's in our earth, we forget that the foundation of this earth is laid by the hands of God. And the word of the Lord writes in Revelation, John writes, and he has a revelation of everything, and he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, Revelation 4. And he said, I heard behind me a great trumpet, and it said, I am the Alpha and the Mega, the beginning and the end. That's the word of the Lord. He says, what you see, write it in the book and send it to the church. And you know the story of the seven churches. Revelation. I want to say to the church today, we need to remember that we have a sure foundation. That everything might be shaken, but we have a sure foundation in God. And that same voice that spoke to John, it said, all things are done. You know, we don't think about the end time like we should, because if we thought about it, we would know that God is in control, even though it doesn't look like it, even though it doesn't feel like it, even though we don't like it. God is still in control. And in Revelation 21, 6, it says, he says, it is done. And the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And here's his promise. He said, I will give unto them that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And to him that overcomes, he will inherit all things. And I will be his God. And he will be my sons and my daughters. I am his daughters. Yeah. But I think the daughters are part of it. <laughs> so it's done, church. He's the beginning and the end. No matter what is happening, he is the beginning of it all. He's the end of it all. The believer wins. You know, we have that, con that statement that says, we read the back of the book and we win. But church, not everybody wins. Only those that thirst after us. Only those that pursue righteousness. Yes. Only those that emanates Christ in their life win. So everyone is not a winner. Only those who trust in God. Who Only those who hunger yes. after his spiritual things and their mind is stayed on them. Does that mean you can't think of anything else? Yes, you can think of other things. But your mind is stayed on him. You give thanks. You give adoration to him. And you know in the midst of any circumstances that he will never leave you or he will never forsake you. And you know that no matter how things get in our country, we have a sure foundation in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For there is no other foundation laid except Jesus Christ. I know you know this, but it's important to have this knowledge in your heart sure foundation. You know, sure is a little word. Somebody says, you want to go shopping? We say, sure. <laughs> you want a cup of coffee? Sure. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Is that a word that everybody uses? Mm -hmm. But it's the most powerful word. And you go to the dictionary and there's like this much stuff about what the word sure means. So when the Lord said, you know, I'm going to lay in Zion a sure foundation, and the forefathers of the United States of America is going to give you a sure foundation. Sure is a very powerful word, and I want to tell you what it means. It means secure. It means safe from danger. It means firmly established. You know, it means steadfast. It means reliable. 
there's nothing reliable in our world today except men. Amen. It means reliable and it means confident certainty. When we hear them make the new rules in our earth, we hear them talk against Christianity and put down God, and we hear those kinds of things, we have a surety that God is the substance and the foundation of all that we are. And, and maybe today, we're kind of removed from those things. You know, but maybe out there in the depths of the world, and maybe those things really don't shake us because we serve God, we love God, we come to church. But there will be a day when we will have to stand for the Lord. We will have to stand for God. We will have to stand there in the midst of several people and say, no, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'll feel the shaking. When they disagree with you. <clears throat> so it's done. There's a sure foundation in God. And we have confident certainty. We're positive, aren't we? Yes. Sometimes we're not positive, church. <laughs> Sometimes we get <clears throat> discouraged and despondent and wonder why is all this coming upon me or us or our family. <clears throat> but I want to say to you this morning, that there's no other foundation that anybody could lay except Jesus Christ. And he's the substance of our life. And he's a sure foundation. He's steadfast. He's reliable. He causes us to be confident. And he, he's the most powerful God in all the earth. Now we know that. But then why do we doubt? Why do we wander? Why do sometimes we have fear? The enemy is at large to sway us and to keep us from the sureness of our God. From the foundations of our world, God's plan was righteousness and obedience for our nation. You know, and he's the one and only foundation that we have. And scripture teaches us that only a nation can survive and be blessed the <coughs> that pursues the heart of God. In Ephesians 1, 3, and 6, it says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now listen close. According as, as he has chosen us in him from the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God loves his people. And his people may have to suffer for the cause of the kingdom of God. But we win if righteousness and the love of God prevails in our life. Verse 5 says, he predestined us, he adopted us, you know, in himself. And we are his good pleasure. When's the last time you looked at yourself as the good pleasure of God? You know. We look at ourselves in a lot of ways. We don't always look at ourselves well. Bless you, honey. You are the good pleasure of God. God loves us. In that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That is the depth and the length and the breadth of his love. And he predestined us. He adopted us. We are his good pleasure. And it says in verse 6, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the Lord. Let the church hear that today. You are accepted in the love if your heart is fixed on God. Therefore, he has laid a sure foundation in this world and in the world to come. Now, that's revelation. A sure foundation in the world to come a sure foundation in this earth. So I say, glory is glory. Hallelujah. Our God is marching on. Amen. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the trial, whatever the heartache, you know, there are death, disastrous things against the people of God. But, glory is glory. Amen. Our God is marching on. And he's marching on for his beloved. He's marching on for his accepted. And he's marching on because we have a foundation in him.
though everything in our world and our society can crumble, we have a sure foundation in God. I think the church needs to know that. I think the church needs to feel that. I think we need to live that in our spirit. When we look at the news and we see, oh, now they're going to do this, we say, well, that's okay. We have a sure foundation in God, and we come against it in the name of Jesus, and we set at liberty our country to be a righteous Let's sing that, glory, glory, hallelujah. Man, it needs to get in our spirit. Yes. I saw masses you know, sing this on July 4th. But they know who gave us this country. Somebody's 